Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today is another top tip video and we're going to be showing you a function um, available in Excel that if you're not already using it, it's one you should definitely add to your list because it will save you a heck of a lot of time when it comes to working with dates. So without further delay, we'll just jump into our three scenarios we've got and how you can use this particular function. So the first one we can see we've got a single uh, column. Uh, at the moment we've only got a header for date. And what we want to do here is we want to have a list of dates uh, between a starting date and an end date. Uh, normally, well, many people, maybe less experienced in Excel, might they might type their date in manually, and they'd have to repeat this process until they've got the desired number of days that they wish. You can maybe drag this down, uh, or you might see people do uh, this, uh, the previous value plus one. Uh, but nonetheless, obviously, it takes you a little while to do that. And nonetheless, if you've got to do quite a few number of dates, uh, maybe like a year's worth, you then obviously have to drag this formula down all the way to row 300 and, well, obviously a bit different for me because I'm starting higher up, but you've got to drag it along like 365 rows to get that full year. Rather than do that, all we need to do is use this one uh, formula. All you need to do is equal is go to sequence. And the first thing we need to do is enter the number of rows for this. So for us, this is going to be days. So let's say we want to do 365 days as my first example. Uh, we've only got one column. We want it all in one date column. So we're going to put number one. And the date we want to start from, we'll say the 1st of January, 1st of January, uh, 2022, uh, within quotations, close bracket, and hit enter. And you can see what that has now done for us, it has done or has expanded the range of to whatever range it is that we need. And you can see each row is now containing that next day. Uh, we've got a bit of formatting, obviously it's fallen apart here. So we can just simply do this and go into short date and it's now working for us. If, however, we were to change the day we need to start from, I don't know, maybe let's say we stop the start from the 1st of March. All we need to do is change it here, hit enter, and you can see that that's now going to reflect for us elsewhere. In the next example, we're going to be using exactly that same uh, function, but this time we want to have our dates spread across seven columns. So you can see we're trying to identify here all your Mondays, your Tuesdays, so on and so forth. You might want to do this if you're creating a, ta a calendar table uh, in which you want to do a lookups or other calculations um, based upon. So all we need to do in this same scenario is go equals uh, sequence once again and just go down to that one there and this time we want to do let's make up a number let's just say 52 because we want to do 52 weeks so type in 52 however this time I've got seven columns so I'm going to type the number seven comma once again and so what's the start date so I know the first of August was on a Monday so we can do that just so we can stay true to the dates Close brackets, hit enter, and you can see that has now built up our calendar in the exact um, parameters that we require. So if you look at Monday, you can see down this Monday column, these days are all going to be Mondays and so on for those other days of the week. The last example we have here is we now want to just do slightly a little bit extra with that formula. And we're going to be able to get this to do uh, sequentially, give us a list of all of the Mondays uh, so basically week commencing uh, for our particular range. So once again, we'll go equals sequence and go down to sequence. And this time I want to do again 52 rows because it relates to the number of weeks in a year. So 52 uh, columns. Again, we're really now in one column band rather than that last example of seven. Another column, I mean comma, sorry, uh, my start date, which again, we've got to make sure we do in quotations. We'll go for the 1st of August once again because I know that was a Monday rotations and then this time rather than close brackets we're going to do another comma and in this section where it says step this is asking us what is the step we want to jump in between each of these dates or in other words each row what is the step that we want to jump because we want to do do this weekly so this column will give us the Monday or the start date for each week we're going to use the number seven but if it was applicable to what you're doing you could put any number there um, that you so desire once I've done that, hit uh, close brackets and hit enter. And again, you can see really quickly, we now have a list of all of our dates as required in this single column. So trying to keep this video nice and short, I hope that gave you some insight into a new formula that you maybe weren't aware of, or is gonna help you significantly reduce the amount of time you spend on doing similar activities in your Excel work. 
If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. It'd be greatly appreciated by me and obviously it helps that all important YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, or if this is your first time finding the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. That way you should be notified of any future videos as and when they come out. And very lastly, if you do have any questions about this video, please drop me a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.